Hey everybody, it's Anthony Russomano again, your Pat's College and Career Expert from Graduates. Uh, we're talking today about finding your best fit college and I want to give you the five steps to creating a great college list. This is where you have an opportunity to start creating that college list for you so you get on the right track and you can start researching schools. So I'm going to be talking about five different steps and the first step I always talk about with students or student athletes is self-exploration. That's the first place you have to start. A lot of times we go into having a school in mind without doing that self-exploration. So what I want to know from you guys, and I want you to be very introspective about this, is when do you feel like you're at your best? What's most important to you? What do you like to do? Or if you could do any job for a day, what would that be? And, and really getting down into the deeper questions about you as a student athlete, and what you want to do in life is going to help you with that first part of exploration. There's a lot of assessments you can do if you don't know where to start. And I will put those in our resource library for you so you can access and start using some of those. But again, the first part in this whole process is that self-exploration. If you don't know you, then you're not going to sure, not know what you're going to want. Okay, So you really need to ask yourself those important questions of what makes you tick and what are you passionate about. Obviously, you guys are playing for the Pats, so soccer is one of your passions, but what else within that or outside of that really makes you tick? And we're going to use that to help us create that college list. So that would be step one. And again, you can follow along through some of the slides and the things that we post in the videos, as well as some of the additional resources that I will have on your Pats site. Okay, So that would be step one. Uh, one of my favorite assessments uh, is Dr. Antonoff's, and he's got some questionnaires that I will post for you. So that's a really good one. If you guys have access to Naviance at your school or school districts, uh, there's a Do What You Are survey or assessment as well. And then there's some, again, that I'll post for you that you can use and tap into. So that's the first step. The second step is really what do you want in a college or a college experience? You really got to know your options as well as your preferences to determine what to go after in a school. Now obviously as soccer players one of the things you might consider is having a soccer program and wanting to play college soccer which is okay. Like I said I've done that myself and that was part of some of my decision making but there's so many other options that a lot of students don't think about and I really highly encourage you to know what those options are and it could be from the kind of university you want to attend whether it's private or public the location that it's in. For some of you that live in California, and I grew up in New Jersey, uh, there's some cold weather back east. Have you really played soccer in the cold weather when the ball hits your leg uh, really fast and it stings like no other? So you really got to consider some things, um, as well as do you want to be in the sun by the beach? Uh, so physical location, the weather, there's a lot of options, and as well as academics. So I really encourage you to know your options. I'm going to give you some search tools that I'll list in, in, a, in a moment that are going to help you create that college list. One of them being Naviance, I already mentioned them. Some of your schools or some of your schools will give you the access for free that help you can manage that, but also allow you to do a search. And that can actually help filter some of those options. So again, knowing yourself first, but secondly, those options within that that really make you excited about having a college experience. And it could be the organizations on campus, the atmosphere, the size of the school, going to football games. Um, so all your likes and dislikes are taken into account. Even the campus facilities, do they have after school tutoring? Do they have uh, stuff for athletes, certain programming? So really take a look at those options and know your preferences. Okay. Step three, do you have any deal breakers? I'll say that again. Do you have any deal breakers? And what I mean is for, for some of you, and not all of us, you might have what we call must-haves. I must have this at the school to have the experience that I want. Um, so do you have any deal breakers that you would not go to that school if it didn't have this? For example, if it doesn't have a football team, I don't want to go there because I'm really excited about going to football games, painting my face blue and gold, and sitting in a, a stadium of uh, 50,000 to 100,000 people. If that idea of tailgating and doing that excites you and you really need to have that experience, then, then maybe that's a deal breaker for you. For some, it might be soccer. If it doesn't have a soccer program, I'm not going to go there because I want to play soccer in college. So again, do you have any deal breakers? Now some of us say we, that might, it might be a deal breaker for me. For example, I went to UC Irvine 
they didn't have a football team. And I thought it was a deal breaker for me, but it really wasn't. Um, so really distinguish what you must have in a college experience or at a college or university. And it could be with a soccer program, it could be facilities, it could be student-teacher ratio, it could be how you get your classes, it could be where the, it's located. Uh, again, so what are those deal breakers? And I encourage you to figure that out sooner than later so you can rule schools off your list early on in the process because it doesn't have what you want. It becomes really important. Too many times students figure out their deal breakers too late and they've gone through the process of the recruiting or visiting schools and they didn't do the research early on to determine that should have never been on my list. Okay, so that would be number three. Number four and number five are kind of intertwined. One is shaping your college list. How do we go about doing that? And the fifth one in terms of matchmaking. How do we find a really good match for you so you can actually have a good balanced college list? Okay. So let's talk a little bit about shaping that list. And I mentioned some search tools and I'll talk a little bit about those and I'll post those here for you. But one of them being Naviance, they have something called Supermatch. And what it allows you to do is filter the criteria based on your preferences, based on any deal breakers that you have. So if you need to have a Division I soccer program, you can filter by schools by that. And that will help you shape your list according to those preferences. It becomes really important because there's over 4,000 colleges out there it's going to seem overwhelming at first. So it's really important that we filter the list so you have a working list to begin with. Okay? So, um, so when we filter that list, again, Navian Supermatch is one. Uh, there's another one called College Board Big Future. So if you don't have Naviance uh, through your school, which is usually paid for by your school, then you want to use something like Big Future. It allows you to sort by your test scores and GPA, as does Naviance. It allows you to sort by location. I only want schools on the West Coast. It allows you to search criteria based on, I want a co-ed school, or I want a school that is in a uh, city or I want a school that has this type of organization, I want certain types of, or I want a dance program. And you're allowed to search those programs through that. So again, Naviance Supermatch, we have uh, College Board Big Future, uh, College Express is another one, and College Raptor. Those are four that I recommend. There's more out there. I would try one of those tools and filter tools that you like that best suits you. A College Ex Express has really great rankings of schools. Um, there's another one called Parchment, which I really like. Parchment allows you to determine your percentage of where you might likely get in to that school based on all your profile, your academic credentials, and some other things as well. So that's when I like one. Big Future I like. It's just user-friendly. And Naviance is a really good organizing tool if you have the ability to use that. So again, uh, using that criteria and that search tool to help shape your list and then when you ultimately get down to shaping this, it's going to include doing more research, talking to the coaches. If soccer is on your list, you need to find out, do I want to play for that coach? You also have to think about things of visiting the schools and really getting a feel for the campus. Does it fit you and your personality? So when we talk about shaping the list and ultimately matchmaking in the step five or step four phase, you really got to determine it by actually getting the feel for that. Um, but also that comes with knowing that and making that match is your academic profile or your credentials. Okay, now being that you guys play soccer and maybe you're a really good soccer player, you might be able to get into a school where your academic credentials are a little bit lower. I deal with a lot of athletes. I had a volleyball player last year who wanted to go to UPenn and UPenn typically wants a 30 or above on the ACT or a 1400 or above on the SAT. She didn't have those numbers, but the coach really wanted her. So she was able to get in the school without having to retest on that. So again, just even knowing your credentials, uh, your bet, one of your best marketing tools is to have those grades to get into the school because then the coach doesn't have to pull any strings. Okay, so knowing your GPA, knowing your test scores, the classes you've taken, and comparing it to the schools that you're maybe considering is really important to do. And that's how you start matchmaking. And then the personality, the social personality of the school, the financial fit, all those things that come into play. 
So you've got to know you, you've got to know the school, and then you've got to match those credentials. And that will help you with the matchmaking process. Okay? So uh, finally, and I mentioned this really briefly, taking those campus visits, uh, but also talking with the coach. If you're really hung up on playing soccer in college, talking to the coach, finding out that program will help you finalize the shaping of your list and matchmaking. Because if you don't want to play for a coach, then maybe it's not the school for you. Unless it's less about soccer and more about the school. Then you might consider it and not play that sport. Okay? So, this process, everybody, is, uh, is over a year long. It takes a while to build that list, research those schools, shape that list, and ultimately matchmake for you. Okay? It doesn't happen in one weekend. It's a, over time, a gradual period, and you have to take an active role in doing that. If you're not visiting the schools, talking to colleges, uh, visiting and talking with the coaches, you're not going to be able to figure those things out. So I highly encourage you to do that. Okay? So those are the five steps. Uh, a couple tidbits or pro tips, as I like to say, is to help increase your chances of creating that list. When we create what I call a balanced list, number one is you don't want to pick schools that you're really reaching for, that you don't have the academic credentials for, or you don't have that athletic ability to play soccer at that school. That's what we call a reach school. You don't want to have all reach schools on your list. If you do, then you're basically putting all your eggs into that one basket and, and praying. Uh, we don't like that, what I call the hope and pray method, that we're going to get into that school or be able to play at that level. Okay? We like to have the majority of our schools from our college list in what I call the target range, where you're a really good match, where your academic credentials fit the average acceptances at that school, your ability fits the range of that ability to play soccer at that school, if soccer is one of the uh, categories that you want to, or one of your deal breakers. Um, that's what a target school is. And then there's those safety schools, the schools that academically you're either well above uh, what they typically get in, or your athletic ability is well above. Maybe you're applying to a Division three school, and that school, you're really Division one talent, or a high-level Division one talent, you're probably going to get a lot of money at that school. So the safety schools are the schools where we probably can get more scholarship, either merit aid or athletic aid. Okay, so think about that and having that ratio, what I call a one-to-one -one ratio, one reach school, two match schools or target schools, and then one safety school. And if you can do that, you'll increase your chances of getting into a lot of those schools. Okay, so keep an open mind. Um, and don't start eliminating schools early on based on financial reasons because we don't know potential for merit aid, scholarships, as well as athletic aid. So for now, put them all on your list. Okay? Um, final few points is the common mistakes um, a lot of athletes make when they're creating their list. One is, you know, I'm going to apply to Division I only or BUST. You can't just apply to Division I schools. There's a lot of opportunities at D2, D3, NAIA for money if you're looking for financial aid, um, athletic scholarships, getting more. And just because they're Division I doesn't mean they might be better than a Division III school. We used to play UC San Diego in soccer all the time when they were D3. And they used to beat us quite a bit. Um, they would get a lot of international players from Sweden and Switzerland, and they would kick our butts. So. It's not shouldn't be Division One or bust. That is a big mistake. You should look at all schools. The more options you have, in terms of the ability to look at different schools, different levels, different locations, you'll have more opportunity. Okay. Um, also, staying so close to home. California is fantastic, but if you open up and you actually expand your search outside of California or outside of Orange County, you'll have a lot more opportunities in terms of colleges as well as soccer programs. Okay. Um, the other mistake a lot of student athletes make is what we call brand name itis. That means I have to go to UCLA or I have to go to a school that we well know for either soccer or for education. And there are so many other schools out there if you give them a chance. So another common mistake or uh, something to avoid is just looking at those brand name schools that you know about. I'm telling you, give some of these other schools an opportunity, you'd be surprised at what they can offer you. and and that might be a good fit for you. So again, don't let pride get in the way, especially if parents don't let the pride get in the way of your child going to a good school that has the things that 
could offer them a really great education, and if so, if they want soccer, a soccer experience. And then ultimately, procrastination. If you wait too long to go through this process and create the list, you end up being a senior, and I've met with a lot of Pats last year as seniors, and they didn't even have a list. They were just going what either their coach told them to go with these three schools, and they didn't look beyond that. You can't wait till that time. Now is the time early on to start making the list. It is a gradual process, as I said. Okay, so those are some of the common mistakes. Um, as you're developing this list, one of the things, that, there's some tools that I'll show you um, on the screen. Um, you can create through the NCAA, there's an NCAA map where you can actually get a list of all the uh, soccer schools that you want. Um, and that's a great way to just see what schools are out there. Uh, but you can use, again, Naviance, you can use Big Future and some of those other search tools to help you do that. Um, but again, use all of those tools and resources to help create that list. The great news about all this, okay, is the majority of the schools out there accept most of their applicants. We know a lot of the schools like UCLA around here and UC Irvine, um, they're very competitive, but Overall, most colleges, if you keep in mind, the average admissions rate is nearly 70%. Again, so if you open up your college list, the good news is most students will get into the majority of the schools they apply, provided that they have a good balanced list. Okay? So, I thank you for your time. Hopefully you got something out of it. Uh, we'll recap really quickly. One, self-exploration. Two is knowing your options. Three is shaping and narrowing your list. And then ultimately number five is matchmaking and finding a good match. All right, thank you and good night.